So what's on your mind? I've got a prayer to start off with. Let's pray this together. Come Holy Spirit, open God's word to us and open our hearts to God's word. Transform us by renewing our minds so we can faithfully follow Jesus and become more like him. Amen. Well, friends, we're in our second part of our series, Balancing Life's Demands. And I'm just going to recap a little bit from last week. Uh, we had a picture of a guy spinning plates on a stick. And the more plates you get, the harder it gets, yes? And we recognise that when we're trying to keep lots of things going at once, it can lead to frustration and fatigue, yes? Because we've got so many things diverting our energy and attention. We flourish when we keep the essential parts of our lives in balance. And we've got five different things. Uh, the mental dimension, keeping our mind active. The physical dimension, keeping our bodies healthy. The emotional dimension, uh, recognising and processing and acting on our feelings in healthy ways. Spiritual dimension, our relationship with God and the social dimension, our relationships with the people around us. Each of those is like a spoke in a wagon wheel, yes? And the trouble is if we get one spoke really, really long and another spoke really short or non-existing, we are then out of balance. And when we're out of balance, that can lead to blow ups, burnout, breakdowns. God doesn't want that for us. So how do we establish balance? Well, the most important thing is to start with the hub of the wheel. We've got to get the centre of our life right. Jesus is the hub of the wheel of life. Jesus is the centre of the universe. Paul writes, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. And he holds all creation together. So Jesus is the hub of the universe. Everything holds together aright in him. Friends, here's the rub. We need to settle this before we can go on. Because until Jesus is the centre of your life, you will keep making a mess of things or you won't be fulfilled. Why not? Because God created you. God created you to be part of his story. God wants you to be part of his good plans for the world. And we get into God's good plans through Jesus. Are we all good with that? Yes? Jesus wants to be the centre of your life so God can bless the rest of your life. Today's theme, what's on your mind? Friends, do you want a healthy active and switched on mind? Yes or no? Yes? Well, Paul makes it clear that followers of Jesus behave differently and think differently from the world we live in. Here's what he writes in Romans 12. Don't copy the behaviour and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person, person by changing the way you think. Paul wants us to develop the mind of Jesus, to see the world and our place in it through his eyes. His colleague Peter writes, so prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. And the Greek for that phrase is, gird up the loins of your mind being self-controlled. Does anyone know what it means to gird up your loins? It's a weird saying, isn't it? Okay, in ancient times, they all wore long garments, right? So to gird up your loins was to hitch your lump and tuck it all in so you could run. So you're ready for action or ready for battle. So when he's saying gird up the loins there, he's saying, look, you need to get yourself organised and make sure you protect your vital parts. And the vital part he's talking there isn't down there. It is your mind. <laughs> Your mind, protect, get your mind prepared and ready for action. Like in today's reading, you see Jesus and he's, 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 he's answering these questions that are poked at him about, oh, taxes, yes or no, marriage and the resurrection, the greatest commandment, commandment. And Jesus' response indicates a razor sharp mind. He astounds and amazes and silences his critics. Bam. Every time Jesus is challenged, 
he, he ends up stitching them up. The human mind, as Royce was saying, is like a supercomputer. Uh, the complexity of, brain, of operations that our brains are doing at any particular time is incredible. In fact, scientists are still working out the capacity of what goes on up there. But the question I want to address now is, well, how can we be wise stewards of our minds? And the most important thing is this, guard the access to your mind. In our digital age, we are constantly bombarded with thoughts and ideas, yes? I mean, it comes from all quarters. Social media, advertising, TV shows, movies, celebrities, journals, journalists, emails, junk mail, philosophers, teachers, preachers, family or friends. We're just bombarded throughout the day. Now, the only person who's going to sift what you put into your heads is you. You are the censor. You are the only person who can control the mental intake, your mental intake and influences. And this is important because what we put into our minds determines the kind of people we are becoming. You know the saying, garbage in, garbage out. Feed the mind of garbage and what will come out of us is garbage. For better or worse, we become like whatever most influences us. And that's why Paul writes, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedience to Christ. Friends, how do we take every thought captive? Simple. By asking, how does this thought or idea match up with Jesus? And if it doesn't match up with Jesus, we reject it. We push it away. We walk away from it. If we don't take those thoughts or ideas captive, here's what can eventually happen. Those thoughts or ideas can take us captive. Friends, ideas are powerful. A lie is a false or bad idea that can potentially ruin our lives. I submit to you that a lie believed has more power in your life than truth ignored. Would you agree with that? Because you act on what you believe. So, when thoughts or temptations come along, we're, like, we're going to be like soldiers on sentry duty. We hold up a stop sign and we say, halt, who goes there or what goes there? What's this about? In the light of God's word, we assess it to determine whether it's good or bad and whether or not we allow it to come into our minds. And if you're struggling to work out the difference, ask the Holy Spirit to give you discernment or ask some Christian trusted friends who've got a bit of wisdom. You know, there are computer apps that protect children while they're on the internet, internet from unsavory sites. Yes, it protects them. Friends, likewise, we guard access to our minds. We determine what we fill our minds with. Amen. All right. Let's unfold four different things we can fill our minds with. And the first is poison. Paul says, I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. In other words, hey, you don't need to know what evil is through first hand experience. You don't need to roll in garbage to know it's rotten. Instead, Paul says, hey, you keep getting wise by knowing the good things God has in store for you and that way you will be able to say no and avoid evil. You know, some printed materials, digital media, websites and TV shows are toxic. It's like sewage that poisons our minds and corrupts our imaginations. It's destructive to our attitudes, our values, and our relationships. And that is true even in small doses. 
Now there are some materials like lead or arsenic that will poison you over time. And so, friends, we need to avoid filling our minds with poison, even in small doses. Here's my application. Do you need to eliminate anything toxic from poisoning your mind? If so, then turn to God and ask for his help and mercy and find some trusted Christian friends that can support you with accountability. I think that's very important. Sometimes we get addicted to these things and we need the support of other people to help us on our journey. The second thing that we can fill our mind is with is stuffing. Hands up if you really enjoy living in a really cluttered house where you don't even have room to move. Hands up. Hands up if you prefer to live in a place where you've got a bit more freedom to move around. Yeah, everyone. Here's the thing though. Some things are neither good nor bad. They're just taking up space. And over time, if anyone knows the things clutter, and we seldom stop to go, oh, how is this stuff useful for me? Or how is this stuff helping others? Stuff takes up space. Space that could be used for other things. And by way of an example, let's explore screen time on all our devices. Let me ask you, outside of education, work or home admin, how many hours of screen time do you engage in each week? Have a think about that for a little bit. How many hours do you reckon? TV reaches 19 and a half million people in Australia each week. One survey on free to air TV broad free to air TV and broadcast video on demand puts the average at 50 hours a month. Now this does not include screen time on social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok or YouTube. So it's probably on the conservative side. 50 hours a month is 600 hours a year, which is about the equivalent of 16 working weeks a year. Think, what else could you do with that time over 10 years? You could probably get one or two university degrees. You could read hundreds of books. You could learn a new instrument or a new language. You could develop your creative skills. You could get to know a whole heap of people a whole lot better. Or you could accomplish thousands of smaller goals. Here's my application. Is what we are feeding our minds constructive or helpful? Or is it just taking up space that you could use for better things? And what might those better things look like for you, for me? Something you can think about in the week ahead. So, poison, stuffing. The third thing is brain food. Brain food's the stuff that helps you grow in knowledge, understanding, wisdom, skills, abilities or character. And brain food can come in many different forms. Uh, camps, courses, conference, retreats, workshops, Small group discussions, all good for brain food. Books or documentaries that expand your knowledge or insight or understanding. Common interest groups or YouTube clips where you can learn skills from. Uh, Damo is the expert on that. He doesn't know something, which is, he already knows a heap, but he just goes on YouTube. He goes, oh, that's right, I can do that, da 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 da. YouTube. Wise people, there are people around that have got wisdom in certain parts of life. So, Often they're happy to share it, so press into people who know more than you do about a certain thing and, and ask them questions and, and can you help me understand things. That's why we sometimes have mentors or supervisors, people that we can press into. And then there are creative groups that pursue a particular passion. You think about arts or singing or opera or drama or whatever, you know, those sorts of groups. Here's the thing, if you want to be, want to be mentally fit throughout your lifetime, then delight in learning. And I think by definition, disciples of Jesus are 
lifelong learners. Do you know the word disciple can mean follower and it also means learner? Here's the thing. We follow Jesus to learn more from him so we can become more like him. Are you open to learning from Jesus? You know, we can start each day saying, Lord, teach me or show me something new today or remind me of something that I need to focus on a bit more. Regardless of your age or position or station in life, Paul urges us, and Royce read this before, fix your thoughts or keep your focus on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. In other words, fill your mind with good stuff, not poison or just dumb stuff. Amen? Application, what am I doing to stimulate my mind? When did I last explore something new? How am I growing in understanding, character or skills? Well, finally, friends, the best thing of all we can fill our minds with is the Bible. An acrostic, basic instruction before leaving earth. Remember the wagon wheel? A spoke is no use at all unless it's actually attached to the hub, right? Likewise, what good is our minds if we are not connecting with God? To focus on what is noble, right, pure, excellent and true, there's nothing on earth that's better than God's word. And from Psalm 1, listen how it describes a person who keeps feeding and thinking about God's word. Oh, the joys of those who delight in the law of the Lord. Law there means instruction. Meditating, ruminating, chewing it over day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. Friends, hands up if, if you'd love to be a flourishing and fruit-bearing follower of Jesus. Hands up if you'd like to be that. Well, the key to that, according to the psalm, is delighting and ruminating and chewing over and reflecting on God's word. That's, that's the pathway to it. So, I encourage you to develop and foster a regular or daily quiet time. I know that a lot of you are already doing this. Here's a few things that might find, you might find helpful. First, get a Bible you find easy to read and understand or a Bible app that you can listen to without falling asleep. Uh, my first Bible I got, my grandma gave me when I was at confirmation, I don't know, 12, 13, it was the RSV. And every time I'd read it, I'd get two sentences in and I'd just go, the shutters would come down. Uh, when I got to seminary, I got an NIV and I'm going, oh, at last I can understand it. If you ask me what Bible I would recommend today, it's the one I use every, virtually every day. Uh, it's the new, no, New Living Translation Illustrated Study Bible. New Living Translation, which is what we use here, Illustrated Study Bible. It's got heaps of maps and drawings and photos. It's just a joy to get into and the language is crisp and clean. Second, find a quiet, comfortable place where you won't be distracted. A set apart place where you, know, you can just connect with God, listen. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal God's heart to you through his word. Holy Spirit, be my teacher. Show me the things that are in God's heart for me. Then read the word. Reflect on the word. Ask it questions. What's going on here? Who are the characters? How is this part of God's story? What's it mean and what does it mean for me? And then ask God to help you live it out. If you're just starting off with this, start small. Just a, a section or a a story at a time. Better to start small and build up than start, <laughs> try to start real big and then fall over. Many people find a plan is helpful. 
if you just Google Bible, um, Bible reading plans, just Google that in, you'll find stacks and stacks of them. And then, third thing I think is also important, seek out another Christian or a small group just to share what God's been showing you or teaching. It's really healthy to have those sorts of conversations because it helps encourage us on the journey and we all need that. All right, wrapping up. Through the Bible, the Holy Spirit reveals God's love for us, especially in Jesus, renews our mind and keeps transforming us into becoming better versions of ourselves. Who wouldn't want more of that? Amen. So, Father God, we ask that you would work this word into us and work this word through us. Lord, we often struggle to keep you as the central thing in our lives. So, Lord, help us to create some space for that, not out of a sense of duty, but out of a sense of delight that you have better things in store for us, good things that are in store for us, things that can shape us and mould us into the people you want us to be in Jesus. Amen.